Hey guys, I'm Easton Laird from Group 4, and today we're going to be talking about climate change. Um, climate change is one of the biggest problems we face in the Earth. It can affect all of us, and it can have a very detrimental effect to our environment and the way we live. So let's get into it. So what is climate change? Climate change is the changing of average conditions of weather around the world. Now, at first, that may not seem like a big deal. It's uh, just changing the weather, but it actually can hurt us more than you think. It can cause various problems to our ecosystems and change our lives forever and for the worse. So we're trying to fix that. So due to humans emitting carbon dioxide, um, that's why sea levels are rising. That's why temperatures are rising, the destruction of ecosystems. So it's because of us and our emits of carbon dioxide and methane and uh, nitrous into the atmosphere. Um, that is the reason why all these horrible events are taking place. So since the Industrial Revolution, humans have contributed 1.6 trillion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Um, in just 2017 alone, humans have emitted 37 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And as you can see in the graph in the bottom right hand corner, we are going at an exponential rate of climate change and of global carbon emissions of, from fossil fuels. So the consequences of climate change. Um, the consequences of climate change may not seem big at first, may seem something small, but it takes on a snowball effect and it gets bigger and have more consequences down the line until a point where it's irreversible and humanity can be at stake as we know it. So at first we have a rise of temperature. Um, the temperatures are rising, the carbon emissions are heating up the Earth's atmosphere, and this can lead to destruction of ecosystems such as colder ecosystems with colder animals, um, coral reefs are at stake, and this can melt the ice caps. The rise of temperatures can melt the ice caps, which just rise in sea level. Sea levels are rising. There will be more natural disasters. There will be flooding, and flooding will cause more refugees to take shelter, which would lead to harder population control and a shortages of food, war over resources. The snowball effect just takes its toll on the earth. Who has contributed the most? So, in 2017, continents that have contributed the most were Asia coming in at 50% of global carbon emissions, North America coming in at 18%, Europe at 17%, and Africa, Oceania, and South America combined at 8% of the world's carbon emissions. Looking at countries now, China comes in at a 10 billion tons of carbon emissions per year. The United States comes at 5 billion tons per year. India at 3 billion tons per year. And Russia and Japan at 2 billion tons a year. As you can see in this map, the darker the purple, the more they emit of carbon emissions. And this is just scary. And it's scary how the biggest countries in the world are contributing the most and not trying to help our environment and save it. And I hope that we can come up with something to prevent this scary 10 billion tons of carbon emissions per year. So our argument, so by using hypothetical syllogism, if the world leaders of superpowers, if the, sorry, if the leaders of world superpowers agreed with each other on what they need to do to help the world, then they would increase funding on finding those solutions. If and when these solutions are found, such as efficient carbon capturing plants, we could try to nurse the environment back to health. Therefore, if world leaders agree to larger economies should invest more to find solutions, then we have a chance at making the earth and the, her atmosphere clean again. This is just saying that we need world leaders to help clean the earth to make these stains, these permanent stains, a little less damaging to our atmosphere. So the United States. The United States is second for the most producing of CO2 emissions uh, out of any country in the world. Since the Industrial Revolution, they have contributed 400 billion tons of carbon dioxide, 
that is the most out of any other country in the world by and they have contributed 25 percent of carbon emissions since the industrial revolution on average one american citizen um, produces enough carbon emissions to equal 1.5 citizens of france 2.2 citizens of japan 10 citizens in china 34 citizens in india and 61 nigerian citizens us here in the united states in one day just by being at home contribute enough carbon emissions to equal 61 nigerian citizens that blows my mind so um we are also one of the lowest on renewables out of the big country powers um uh, we only use 0.2 percent of our national budget to contribute to these renewables that is only equivalent to 44.1 billion dollars per year and the reason being is because most of our politicians in congress um, don't believe that we are the reason for climate change even though there's scientific evidence that there is but they don't believe that it is our fault and we are contributing to climate change therefore they will not fund it to help the problem um, in the map you can see the more red the area the more carbon emissions are being profound and uh, in california especially where we are we are producing some of the most highest co2 emissions in america which is really detrimental to our environment and we need to find a way we can use renewables to fix this problem and help our earth and help our country. China. So uh, although the USA might have contributed the most since the Industrial Revolution, China is continually, continually um, growing and contributing more and more every year. They are the leading country that contributes 10 billion tons of CO2 emissions per year. They are make up for 25% of emissions each year. Um, they are, although they produce the most CO2 emissions per year right now, um, they are trying to contribute more than the USA of their national budget on renewables. So they're contributing 0.9% of their budget to renewables. That is equivalent to $110 billion per year. And the reason why their CO2 emissions is so big is because they are basically the factory of the world. They have the most factories, they produce the most products per year, and the most exports per year. And countries like the USA are not doing any better by buying these products and allowing China to continue using these factories and producing these fossil fuels into the Earth's atmosphere. So it needs to be a group a group project that we can stop climate change it needs to be the USA, China, all these super world leaders need to come together and stop climate change together. So we have a video. Um, it's before the flood. It's Leonardo DiCaprio and he, his journey on how he sees climate change firsthand and how he sees world leaders deal with climate change and how us humans are being super detrimental to the earth we live on, so. We've known about this for decades, for over half a century. Try to have a conversation with anyone about climate change, people just tune out. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. And, the change. and the problem seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. The truth is, the more I've learned about this issue and everything that contributes to the problem, the more I realize how much I don't know. Oh my God, look at how violent that is. Paradise that has been degraded and destroyed. We're knowingly doing this. I just wanna know how far we've gone and if there's anything we can do to stop it. The U.S. has been the biggest emitter of greenhouse gases in history. You're a fossil addicted country. We are doing more investment in solar today than the U.S. is. Half the people in office still don't believe in climate change. Why do you think there is such opposition about the science? I think it's politics. People are so arrogant to think they can change climate. 
The environmental issues have become the biggest reason for mass demonstrations. But we want to hold them accountable. This is the most important issue of our time. The question is, can we change our course in time? You need 100 gigafactories to transition them to sustainable energy. That would make the United States the whole world. The whole world. All energy. That sounds manageable. All that I've seen on my journey shows us we have the means of stopping this devastation. Politicians do what the people want them to do. Once the American people are convinced, the politicians will fall in line very quickly. If we keep pushing, there's no reason why we can't solve this problem. The world is now watching. We ask you to protect it. Are we and all living things we cherish our history? That was just a great uh, video about climate change and what we can do and how it affects our environment. So what can we do? We can cut carbon, methane, and nitrous emissions. That would be our number one goal, although obviously we can't do that. We would need higher powers to do that. Um, we need to find environmentally, environmentally friendly ways to make electricity. Um, we need to recycle, switch to renewable energy, use electric cars. And most importantly, we need to speak up and use our voice to get our government and our higher powers a way to change this ongoing problem, to make it a safe place for us to live and a safe place for everybody to live because this is our fault and we need a way to change it. Thank you.